you so much for meeting with me, Minister. As part of the Climate Youth Delegate role this year, um, I got to survey Irish young people about international climate policy and key outcomes of the survey were for urgency, transparency and also more climate education in curriculums, so to not leave it to just the civil society sector. So have you any thoughts on where Ireland is headed in this direction? We have a great education system. Like our primary school system, I think particularly good because the standards really high across all the national schools and the curriculum is slightly creative and it gives freedom for teachers. Our secondary school system really delivers. If you look at, the, there was a recent international study and we were top of the class in literacy and in, we were even good in maths and science, which you didn't think we were good at. Definitely not good at. <laughs> no, no, mine. That's what I probably thought. It. But do I think that our education system is serving us when it comes to an understanding of nature and ecology and interconnection I don't think it is, and, and I think, I mean, that's not to criticize any biology teacher or, but I think the kind of slightly learning off nature, the leaving cert, doesn't really get to inspire you as much as what we need in terms of responding to the ecological crisis we're in. Three ecological crises, climate, biodiversity loss and pollution. My next question is, in terms of Ireland's COP28 priorities, there's deep concern about the impact of climate change on peace and stability too. So at COP there was the thematic day for relief, recovery and peace. And I suppose how is Ireland hoping to use its role in a world stage at the moment with conflicts and genocide and the effects of this on the climate crisis? I think it is all connected with conflict. If you look at the countries that are most impacted by climate change, they're also the areas where there's most conflict. Horn of Africa, West Africa, Middle East and into Southeast Asia. And there's real risks elsewhere, like Brazil, the droughts there are terrifying in terms of the impact, potential impact. But I go back to simple messaging in this. But the response to climate change is the peace project of our time. Not only will it protect us against climate change if we get it right and deliver the emissions reductions, but also the switch that's involved to renewable energy particularly has a peace component because it's it exists everywhere. Bill McKibben said the, the fuel comes for free from the heavens and everyone can own it and made particularly the solar revolution of relatively simple materials silicon polysilicon you can't hold a country to ransom you can't kind of uh, steal that or you can't monopolize it so i do think and particularly i think in the countries that are in conflict also tends to be the countries in debt and in suffering malnutrition and suffering from a very unjust world and investing in climate as a development opportunity particularly for africa latin america small island states less developed countries southeast asia is a way in which you can actually lift them and their success in that will be good for us forced migration is one of the biggest challenges in europe it's also the biggest challenge in africa because if you're losing your good people and 650 million people in africa don't have access to electricity so you need we need to make this investment in the future to stop climate, but also to deliver the sustainable development goals. The yeah, two go together. Absolutely, because I mean, that addresses the part of loss and damage that can't be quantified by money, like the loss yeah. of culture and loss of, you know, your home and everything. So another question, just looking forward to the future, you know, in 2020 in Ireland, we had the Supreme Court say that there's a right to a healthy environment. So in terms of legislating for kind of protecting this kind of healthier way of living, is there anything coming down the line, like in the Oireachtas, about a healthy, healthy environment and a right to that. They two go completely together. Like the switch away from fossil fuels will improve our health because they won't be choking on fumes. And also the switch to public transport and to active travel is really good for your health as well as good for the environment. My next question and the last one <laughs> to give you a bit of a break today. On day one of COP we had the decision in loss and damage um, and the fund being operationalised. So I know that Ireland is like the second highest per capita at the moment. So that's a really great sign. But in terms of innovative sources, I know you've talked a little bit about kind of um, levies on airlines and things earlier. You know, where do you see Ireland's role in kind of pushing and being a driving force and in getting innovative sources of loss and damage funding in? Because obviously it can't all necessarily come from the exchequer. That's what these cops are about. And we won't make a decision here this week, but we can actually set it in train so we might get a decision next year. I know that's very incremental, and per, 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 but that's the way it works. And that's how loss and damage was delivered. It was agreed in principle last year and yeah. it was delivered here in reality. So I'm part of these negotiations. I'm pushing that we do look at a whole range of innovative sources of finance. 
um, aviation levies, maritime levies, um, carbon taxes. Yeah, in, in the Youth Delegate Survey, there was a lot of kind of support for like flight levies, fossil fuel company levies, and the carbon yeah. tax too. So I think there is support there, especially among young people. So yeah, yeah. It would, it'll be good to see that kind of all feed into the loss and damage fund as it develops. Come back to my Tuesday and see, we'll <laughs> see where we are. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for taking thank the time you, to Jenny. meet with me. And yeah, hope you enjoy the rest of class. Hope you do too. <laughs> hope you do too.